this is the first of four meditations in which I want to look at something quite philosophical, but still something really crucial for our spiritual lives. And they are the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude and temperance. Now, there's a bit of terminology in all of this, which can be a bit off-putting, but actually it is very useful. It really helps to make things crystal clear. So be patient with the terminology. These four cardinal virtues go right back 2,400 years, back to the early Greek philosophers, Plato in particular. And these, these men, not Christians, of course, that they saw that there were four basic qualities without which it really is impossible to be a good person. They called, or they became called, the cardinal virtues. That comes from the Latin word cardo, which is a hinge. And so you can imagine it like four hinges on a door, and the door is moral excellence. And so it hinges on these four characteristics or qualities. Anyway, be patient. Things will become clearer as we go along. The very first of them is called prudence. And again, we're already off to a bad start because that word really means quite little to us. Or it, 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 it sum, summons up images of prudishness, which is anything but prudence. Prudence, actually the mother of all the cardinal virtues, is a kind of wisdom, a, a groundedness, being grounded in reality. And this is a really, really important point. Truth precedes the good. Another way of putting that is goodwill is not the best thing. You know, when people say, oh, he meant well. <laughs> well, that could be said of a lot of people who did really awful things. But in adverted commas, they meant well. Well, a person who does really awful things meaning well is lacking in this key virtue of prudence or groundedness in reality. So it does require a basic knowledge of reality, to be immersed in reality. And this, of course, is something really countercultural to say that good it intention is not enough at all. And good intentions, as I think is the phrase, the, 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 the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Well, there, there is a lot to that. And it is a virtue because we can deliberately, as I think we're trying to do now, really try to think about reality really try to grasp reality objectively. But that requires a, a stillness. You could say the big enemy of all this, of course, is, is our phone and, and social media and all this kind of thing. It's always grabbing our attention, but never allowing us to have the silent contemplation of reality necessary to really get to know it, but get to know it deeply. So thoughtlessness and distraction would be things that pull against this virtue of prudence. And there's also a very interesting thing here again, which I think is very important in the spiritual life. You might have heard a lot about legalism. Well, legalism is blindly following arbitrary prescriptions without any really real grasp of reality. In other words, I just do it because I'm told and nothing else. And we don't even know why am I, why, do, why am I supposed to do this? Why am I being told to do this? Are we just follow, just like following orders? Now that may have a place at times, but you cannot base a mature moral life on just following orders. Then you end up with what's called casuistry. Casuistry is, did I break the rules? Did I break the rules? They're arbitrary. I don't understand at all where they come from or why. And I, I always get a shiver down my spine when somebody says, Father, at what point after which, if I arrive at Sunday Mass, is it no longer valid? Is it after the Gospel? Is it after the homily? Is it after the creed? And I always feel that that person really is really on the wrong track. And you kind of wonder, well, why bother going at all if you're, if you're trying to go for the minimum time? You don't really have an understanding of what Mass is. And then, of course, then the moral life all becomes looking for this boundary between mortal and venial sin. And it's all about avoiding mortal sin, which is not really a moral life at all. It's uh, a very immature moral life, and, and a maturity is required for real moral life, the moral life of a grown person. The kind of person that God wants us to be, a mature person. But that requires that you and I really grasp reality. Why do you ask me to do this? Why does God ask me to do this? 
contemplating these things, also studying. I mean, well, as you're doing now, listening to these these uh, series of, of meditations is a way we're trying to get a deeper grasp on reality, and in this case with a certain amount of help from, say, the Greek philosophers. Now, this is all on the level of human perfection, of becoming a just person, a brave person, a temperate person, all requires you know what reality is and I know what reality is. And only the person who who does that, engages reality deeply, can really be a prudent person. Now, in this we haven't mentioned God's charity, the supernatural realm. That goes beyond what we look at here. And yet, God, there's a famous phrase, grace builds on nature. So in other words, God cannot really or would not normally build on wonky foundations. So if a person is very imprudent, unjust, intemperate, all these things, it's, it's kind of hard for God to produce a, a great saint there. But if a church person is really grounded in reality, is, is a contemplative streak about them, is fair, kind, temperate, it is much, much easier for God then with his grace to come and really fully transform that person, take their basic goodness and raise it right up to the divine level of charity. Anyway, more about this, we will see it over the coming weeks. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.